But at the same time, it also says a lot about the process of colonization. This isn't bigotry. It's hard for people to get this sometimes. But you have the British homeland, right? And they are an empire. And it's based off of mercantilism. And mercantilism is money. But it's not all about money. After the American Revolution, it wasn't about money. What it's about is stability. This is the mommy land, right? And then you have colonies all over the world. And you have to realize that England isn't a dictatorship. So who's making the actual money for the most part? Today, the United States has interests all over the world, but is it government? Walmart? Walmart isn't owned by the government. What does the government get when Walmart does really successful? Taxes. Taxes. That's it, right? But does the government want Walmart to be really successful? What also does it get? Can't be right. What also does it get? It gets employment. It gets lots of people to get paid. Those people then take their money and they pay for other things. And so there is a certain interest in having a strong economy. So the government doesn't have to own these businesses in order for you to have a strong economy. It's in your interest to make it easy for the economy to grow. This is not just money. So when England has interests all over the world, it's because there's private businesses, firms that have an interest in these colonies. And they, they're going to pay taxes to the crown, they're going to employ people, this will help the English government. So it's a little bit more complex. It's not just money, it's about kind of empire. Now, the reason why I say this is going to be confusing is because there is a hierarchy. These guys are presumed to be the source of success. And so when you are at the homeland here, you have the British, either the governor or the military, whoever who is establishing order. And whether you tell them or not, what is everybody who is indigenous, the locals, where do they fit in this order? It doesn't have to be racist, it doesn't have to be white-black, but it's totally knowledge-based. The English have a very sophisticated political and economic system. And what about these guys that they're taking over? And before you get too far, what happens if they had an equally sophisticated political and economic system? They'd be just as strong. <laughs> Would England be able to colonize? No. No! Right? It's the whole point. They are colonized because they don't have a sophisticated corporate knowledge system of economics and politics. So automatically, there's a hierarchy. The English are coming in above. And with pacification, why do the English see that they're there? What's the justification for their being there? To create order. Yeah, because if they're not there, what's going to happen? Because the people don't have order. Now this sounds horribly patronizing. I have to be there because the kids are going to run racket if, if I'm not there. It sounds horribly patronizing, but what's the reality? Because it's not just a state, this is a modern mercantilist empire state. It's a much more sophisticated system. And so they wouldn't have it in India. It wouldn't be in the Middle East. It wouldn't be in Africa. It wouldn't be in these other places. You are bringing this fairly sophisticated corporate knowledge system somewhere else. And so, yes, these guys are at the higher end. And they're teaching. And yes, are they going to have a patronizing attitude? Totally. And if you're the soldier coming in, and you know that your job is to keep peace, because if you're not there, they're going to run racket, then it gets reinforced. What is thuggy? And you guys know thuggy, because you say, look at that thug over there. You guys know, remember? Thuggy. It's Indian. It's a religious ceremony. One of the gods in India gets um, satisfaction through violence. 
And so thuggy was when a group of people would come in and then just beat somebody to death. It was a ceremonial thing. We did it for religious things, right? Well, if you are British, sophisticated, right? If you are civilized and you see thuggy, what is your reaction? Yeah, they're animals, right? They're animals. So you have to stop them from doing that. They don't understand. What about sete? S-E-T-T-E-E. -E. You guys ever heard of sete? Sete was the practice of when the man died, his wife would sit on top of his body and be burned to death with him in cremation. Because she does, yeah, it's, Linda, it's like, I don't think this is what I want to do. You are the possession of the man, and so when he dies, his things go with him, so the woman goes with him. Sete, and the thing is, it wasn't always forced. The women did this. So when the British comes into this village and see them burning this woman alive, are we horrified by this? Of course we're horrified by this. Now, let's be honest. If we were completely diversity folks, totally culturally aware, politically sensitive, right? You get this in your books when we were talking about the Europeans taking over South America. One of the first things that they complained about is that the Christian missionaries were converting people. Now, how horrible was this? Well, if you're completely politically correct, you'd say, that's what India does. And aren't you being intolerant to prevent them from doing this? And what's the British response? It's grotesque. You are violating people's rights. You're killing people. I don't care if it's a religious thing or not. You don't kill people. So you can see where this conflict comes in. And so you can look at this and you can say, well, you know, the English were patronizing. They were patriarchal. You know, they thought they were higher and superior to the colonists. Yes, they did. But why? It's true. They weren't being tolerant. It's true. Question. Yes. Were they tolerant about most things except for things that they Yes. Want? Yes. That's the real trick. It's not because they hate black people or they hate non colored people or whatever it is. It was in civilization. This is what you do. Yes, they're Christian. And yes, they believe in human life. And they thought that the Indians were barbaric. But let's be honest. If you were sitting there and you saw a woman being burned to death, would you not have the same feelings? Yes, you would, right? It isn't politically correct. It wasn't tolerant. But it wasn't necessarily just a matter of bigotry. You're dealing with two separate levels of corporate knowledge. And you cannot understand, you cannot understand world history without recognizing that the corporate knowledge is not only technology, which is clearly there, but there's also political and social convictions that go with it. In our modern society, we assume everyone has human rights, that they're born with human rights. This isn't a technology, and yet it is clearly a byproduct of Western civilization. It's a part of our corporate knowledge base. We also have cultural identity. And for us, the idea that a woman is going to be burned alive with her husband is abhorrent to that. Then there's also the practice of cultural diffusion. And as you know, when you have two corporate knowledge bases, and the more cultural diffusion you bring about, it's going to increase your corporate knowledge. It's also going to change the cultural identity. And we can look at this and we can lament it and say it's the worst thing in the world, or we can recognize that it's inevitable. This is what's happening with colonization. It's not a simple situation where the British are wrong and the Indians are right. The British are wrong and the Africans are right. The British are wrong and the Asians are right. You're dealing with two separate corporate knowledge bases. So here's the great big British one, and then here is wherever else we're at, in India. And India's corporate knowledge base is not the same. As a result of cultural diffusion, they share 
similarities over time, more and more. But as they do that, then the cultural view, the cultural identity changes. Not just with India, but with Africa, African countries, with parts of certain Asian countries. This is the part of colonization. Now we're going to end this unit next week. What's the very last thing? What do we see in the 20th century, coming into the 21st century? Decolonization. Yeah, decolonization, because we don't want to be that guy who is imposing that order on everybody below. Because even though you know that it's a good thing, you are the one that has to do it. And as these people become more and more, uh, have more and more cultural diffusion, which means their own corporate knowledge base increases, they are becoming less and less willing to be below. That's why you have revolutions. Sometimes very, very violent ones. Sometimes quite peaceful. In India, the transfer of power, totally peaceful. India, England just left. Of course, as soon as they left, what happened? Civil war is instant civil war. Instant civil war. England just left, boom! Civil war for four years. Very funny. Because it was the English who were pacifying India. That's why they were peaceful. As soon as they left, India had to take care of it. And they did not have the same corporate knowledge base. Now, if I'm going to be politically correct, what I'll say is, they didn't. Because this corporate knowledge base was largely Western. It reflected Western English Christian ideals. In India, isn't Western, isn't Christian. It's got reincarnation. It has a caste system. It's got all sorts of other legacies. So they had to create their own government. So their government looked a little bit like the West, but then it wasn't. This isn't unique to India. We're going to see this in Africa. We're going to see this in Asia. One of the points I'm trying to make here is that this isn't a yes or no answer. It's not these guys are right and those guys are wrong. It's a corporate knowledge issue.